This is visual inspection of the head and neck. It is very important that uh, all aspects of the face and the neck are visualized and inspected for any kind of abnormalities prior to uh, full, full examination. First, it's good to take a broad view of the face and neck, looking for any obvious deformities, swellings, erythema, or any kind of uh, deviation of the facial symmetry. Of course, the jaw and location can be assessed, the orbital ridges can be assessed, um, whether the uh, neck, the cervical spine is in correct alignment can also be evaluated. With regards to the neck, um, any kind of jugular vein distension, pulsations, masses, edema can also be inspected. The skin of the face is also a good thing to always be aware of. Any kind of uh, dermatological problems can be assessed at this point as well. Visual inspection of the eyes is also important. Looking at uh, gaze, conjugate gaze, um, noticing the uh, location of the eyelids in relationship to the eyes, any kind of ptosis. Um, also the nares, lo looking at septal uh, location, whether there's deviation. Um, these are all good signs to be aware of. This concludes the visual inspection of the head and neck. All right, next we're going to perform the palpation part of the head and neck examination. Jason, I'm just going to be palpating different parts of your face and neck, all right? Okay. All right. Using the pads of my fingers, of course, I lightly at first palpate and then deeply if I feel it's warranted. Um, the gobella is first palpated. The orbital ridges can be assessed. If you have any pain with this, you just let me know. You also have the patient open and close their mandible. Okay, any pain with that? No. Also assessing for any clicks with that is important. The bridge of the nose can also be palpated. Palpating here over the sinus areas is also important for patients that are complaining of sinus, sinusitis type of symptoms. Any discomfort with that? No. The important places for that are here above the orbital ridges and here over the maxillary sinuses. Okay. Um, for uh, lymphadenopathy, it is important to palpate uh, various aspects of the head and neck. First, starting superiorly and moving inferiorly, posterior auricular, that means behind the ear, can be assessed with light palpation. And posterior occipital, behind the head. And then superficial lymphadenopathy can be palpated. And then deep lymphadenopathy can be palpated just medial to the sternocleidomastoid muscles. Submandibular lymphadenopathy, here posteriorly, and then submental, here more anteriorly. The thyroid can also be palpated. That is usually done in the following manner. Pads of the fingers, the operator is behind the patient. Just let me know if you have any discomfort with this, Jason. Palpating the wings of the thyroid and moving medially. The tracheal cartilage can also be assessed in this manner for any kind of deviation. The trachea and its midline position should also be assessed. This is done by using one hand, placing two fingers medial to the sternocleidomastoid, and placing one finger over the tracheal cartilage. This concludes the palpation portion of the head and neck examination.